Hey everyone, our guest speaker today is a meowstronaut named Neil Hostrong. Get it? Neil Armstrong was the first human to walk on the moon, so I said Neil Hostrong. Okay, okay, never mind. I've clearly been stuck at home way too long. Hope you're doing well today and that you're ready for some science learning. Today's lesson includes two really important words that I want you to learn and understand. You should be able to explain to someone else by the end of this lesson why we have day and night and how that works. At the end, we're also going to talk about poor planet Pluto. I'm sure some of you have already been wondering as we've talked about the solar system, what exactly happened to Pluto? Most people know it's not really a planet anymore and they wanna know why. So I'll give you some information about that at the end today. All right, are you ready? Let's count down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off. Our first big word today is rotate or rotation. Rotate is the action. The word rotate means to spin. The earth spins around in a circle one time every 24 hours. How long is 24 hours? Right, it's one day. So if the earth is in a certain spot right now, it will turn around and be back in that exact same spot again tomorrow at this exact same time. So let's practice that, let's rotate. Stand up with me, even if you're sitting, stand up. I'm going to do it too. And let's stand and spin around one time. You ready? We're gonna rotate. Perfect, you just rotated. Down at the bottom, you see I have a little memory trick for you to help remember what rotate means. Do you see how I wrote that T in the middle? really big. Rotate has a T in it, just like the word turn. That T reminds me that rotate means turn. Rotate, turn. Don't forget that because we're going to add in another word in a few minutes that might start to confuse you. Okay, keep that in your head. All right, here are a couple examples of other things that rotate. Ballerinas, when they spin around and around and around. And a basketball, when a basketball player spins it on his or her finger. Can you think of anything else that rotates? All right, when the earth rotates or turns around, half of it faces the sun and the other half doesn't. So if you look at this picture, here's the earth right there. And you see how the sun is here and it's shining and it lights up this side of the earth, but this side over here is in darkness. That means that when you are having daytime, people on the other side of the planet are having nighttime and it switches when you're having night. So when you're sleeping, the other half of the world is having their daytime. It's kind of weird to think about. When I was in college, I actually spent five months in Australia, which is on the far other side of the world. And sometimes I would call my parents on the phone, but I always had to stop and think first about what time it was actually back at home. Because if I was awake and it was the middle of the day and I wanted to talk to them, it might be, it was probably the middle of the night for them. So like I couldn't call them at lunchtime because that was two o'clock in the morning back here and they wouldn't be too happy if I called and woke them up then. All right, so here's our globe, and you see our smiley face. That's to help remember where we are. We're on the eastern side of the United States, so as the Earth rotates, you'll see that come around. That's where we live, okay? So here's our globe, our Earth, and it rotates or spins, turns around, right? Takes 24 hours for it to go all the way around. I'm going a little bit faster than that. And at any one time, half of the Earth is facing the sun. So if our flashlight here is like the sun, 
you can kind of see the sunspot on this side of the earth. And that means this side is having nighttime. It's dark over there, okay? So there's us smiling, it's daytime. Over on this side, it's nighttime. And as the earth rotates or turns, now we're starting to move away from the sunlight area into darkness. Whereas this part of the world is moving into the daylight. And now they have daytime and we have nighttime. Make sense? Here's our other word. Okay, this is revolution. And that's what we're talking about. And the action word is revolve. It takes 365 days to go all the way around the sun. Remember the sun, that star, doesn't move. It stays in one spot. We go around it. Okay, how long is 365 days? One year, exactly. So today is May 8th, 2020. That means on this day next year, when you're at the very end of fourth grade, the earth is going to be back in the same spot around the sun. It will have gone around the sun exactly one time from now until May 8th next year. So how many revolutions has the earth had since you were born? Think about that one. If you're nine years old, that means the earth has gone around the sun nine times, and then maybe it's part way around the next time. Earth is revolving around the sun. It's still rotating or spinning around. Let's use our bodies and see if we can practice this to help us understand a little bit better of how both of those movements work at the same time. So let's stand up again. Go ahead, do it. Do it. If I'm doing it, you can too. All right, find something that you can put on the floor in front of you that you can revolve around. So I've got a little stool I was sitting on and I am going to rotate while I am also revolving around my stool. Rotating and revolving. Are you dizzy yet? That's what the earth does constantly, never stops. We just don't really feel it though because it's happening so slowly and everything on earth is moving at the same time. So we don't really notice the movement because it's all moving at the exact same time. Next week, we'll learn a way that we can prove how there's movement though. We'll find something that kind of helps show that. Hopefully you understand now that the earth is revolving around the sun. And at the same time, it's also spinning or rotating in a circle each day. And it's doing those at the same time. Let me throw one more thing at you. The earth is not straight up and down with the North Pole straight at the top. Sounds confusing, but actually the earth is tilted a little bit on its side. And when scientists and people draw, we'll pretend that this is the earth. When they draw the earth, sometimes they draw a little stick going right through the center of it. There's not actually a stick right through the middle of the earth, but we draw this imaginary line here and it's called an axis. And that helps remind us that the earth is actually tilted, which is really important. That tilt is what gives us seasons, like spring, summer, fall, and winter. We have seasons because the earth's not straight up and down, it's tilted. If you could cut the earth in half all the way around it, where the equator is, we live in this top half. They call it a hemisphere. So we live up here. Other people live on this side. We live up at the top, okay? And if we pretend this little lamp is the sun, okay? There's our sun. And we'll pretend this is the earth. And remember, we live in the top half. So we're spinning. And as we spin or rotate, we're having day and night. Every single day that happens. Sometimes we're facing the sun, sometimes we're facing away, day and night, day and night, over and over and over. But we're also revolving around the sun. And then remember it takes a whole year. I want you to notice at this place, we live in the top. We still sometimes face the sun and have daytime. 
Sometimes we turn around and face the other way and have nighttime. But notice this top half is tilted away from the sun. At that time of the year, it's winter and we have less hours of sunlight over the course of our day. That's why in the winter, if you don't, if you don't remember, sometimes it got dark, maybe before you even had dinner maybe even before you got home, especially if you went to a daycare or somewhere else after school. In the winter, we don't have as many hours of daylight in a day. Still have some, because we're still spinning around. Notice as we revolve around and the tilt stays the same, now our top half of the earth is tilted toward the sun. So we still come around back here and have nighttime, but it doesn't last as long because we're closer tilted closer toward the sun. So at that time of year, we call that summer, and that's when we have more sunlight hours during the day. That's why in the summer, sometimes the sun may be out until after your bedtime, okay? And it also makes things warmer. Think again, when we're having summer, we're tilted toward the sun, what about the people that live at the bottom of the earth down here? They're having winter. And then when we move around this way, it's the opposite. Now they're tilted toward the sun closer and they're having summertime. And we're up here having winter time. We still get day and night, but our hours of daylight is a little bit different if it's winter or summer. I know that's a lot to try to remember right now, you're going to learn a lot more about the day and night and the seasons going around next year when you're in fourth grade. But for now, I want you to try to really focus on and remember the words rotate and revolve. Those are very important. This is the moment you've been waiting for. What happened to Pluto? Pluto didn't disappear. It is absolutely still there. Here's what happened. Keep in mind that science is a subject that changes all the time. People learn and discover new things, and so information changes. What happened to Pluto is a perfect example. Back in 1930, about 90 years ago, a young man um, who's an astronomer, someone who studies space, discovered something far away in the sky. He and some other scientists decided it must be a ninth planet. And for 76 years, that's exactly what people thought. It's exactly what your parents and I learned when we were in third grade, and they taught us all about the nine planets. But in 2006, scientists were able to study Pluto more and more with better telescopes and better technology. They kept learning more about it, and they even found another object that's a lot like Pluto. And they even wondered for a little while if they had a 10th planet. There's a group of scientists in the world called the International Astronomical Union. And they have three big rules for something to be considered a planet. As they looked at the new object and what they knew about Pluto, they started to realize that even Pluto didn't fit all three of those rules. So they changed its status to a dwarf planet. Dwarf means smaller. So basically, it's a small version of a planet, but it's not exactly like the other planets. So now we have eight main planets and five dwarf planets. But who knows? Maybe one day you'll actually be an astronomer who discovers another planet or learn something about one of the dwarf planets that changes things all over again. This is a picture of the New Horizons spacecraft. Back in 2006, a little bit before scientists made this decision about Pluto, NASA launched the New Horizons spacecraft out into space with no people on board. In 2015, so it took nine years, it finally made it to Pluto. And it didn't land on Pluto, but it flew very close to it, the closest anything's ever been to Pluto and it took some really awesome photos. I'm gonna back up. I want you to look again at that photo. 
a lot of people think it looks like Pluto has a heart on it, which is kind of cute after we say it's not a planet anymore. And it looks like it's saying, wait, don't forget me. Okay, time for a space joke. Couldn't forget a joke today, right? To understand this, I want you to understand that a satellite is anything that orbits around a planet. Planets orbit around the sun, but satellites can orbit around planets. Some satellites are naturally out there and others have been made by people and launched into space. We have both kinds of satellites. So the joke is, what do you call a satellite of Earth that just ate a big meal? You get five seconds. It's a full moon. Get it? A moon is a satellite and it's full. Ha ha ha. I know. I know. When you're finished with this video, I encourage you to go check out the other links that your teacher posted for you. There are two YouTube videos today, and both of those videos are songs. Please, 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 I'm encouraging you to go check those out. One of them is the old song, Watch Me, with It Nay Nay. You guys should remember from a few years ago. And it definitely helps you remember the difference between rotate and revolve. The other song is a Storybot song, and it's a lot of fun too, and teaches some facts about the different planets. Then the last thing your teacher posted today is the science unit vocabulary. There are three pages on there, and so far we've almost finished the whole first page. So try using that page with somebody else at home. See if you can practice the different words and definitions that we've learned so far. My email address is on the slide, so you can pause this video and write that down, and feel free to send me an email. I would love to hear from you. I miss you guys. Bye.